Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. So in this example, we will be looking at multiple dependent variables, uh, the same instrument in this case, used three times with the same participants. So I have here a set of fictitious data, and we have an ID variable, a pretest, a post-test, and a post-test administered three months after the treatment is over. So let's assume that we're treating uh, depression, and we have a particular specific treatment we've developed, and we want to see, uh, for one, does it seem to lower the measure of depression when the treatment's over, so from pretest to post-test, is there a decrease? And then how durable is the treatment? Meaning three months later, uh, does the score go up, down, or does it remain uh, the same? And notice in this design that we do not have an independent variable, meaning there are no uh, levels of an independent variable, there are no separate categories. All 40 participants in this study were given the same treatment and administered the same test three times. So we don't have a control group or a treatment as usual group. We simply have 40 participants and we measured them repeatedly using the same instrument. So these data and our research question are compatible with repeated measures ANOVA. When using repeated measures ANOVA, you want to make sure that we have independent observations, that the values in the three dependent variables are normally distributed, and that they are measured at the interval or ratio level of measurement. And in SPSS, uh, both of those are referred to as scale. So you can see that the uh, pretest, post-test, and post-test three months all or scale. So that's what we want. There's also an assumption of sphericity, and that's tested as part of the repeated measures ANOVA procedure. So to get started with repeated measures ANOVA, we'll go to Analyze. We'll look for the general linear model and then repeated measures. And you can see it's, it first gives you the within subject factor name. It defaults to factor one. Uh, it's not really too important what's in here. It just makes the uh, output a little more interpretable if the name matches what you're studying. So in this case, we're looking at the passage of time. So we'll just name this time. And we have three levels because we have three dependent variables. So that'll be three levels. We're going to add that, so you can see it's time, and then three. I'm going to click Define, and here we have uh, within subjects variables, and also down here there's between subjects factors. We don't have any, and of course covariates, we don't have any of those either. But it is important that we align the within subjects variables correctly, so we're going to start with the pretest, which will be first. That will go uh, in the one, and then post-test with the two, and then the post-test three months after the study would be three. So we have them correctly aligned there. I'm not going to make any changes here uh, on the right to model or contrast, but under plots, I'm going to put time on the horizontal, horizontal axis and add that. All right, so that'll give us a, a plot that'll be useful to uh, interpret. And then for post hoc, we're not going to have anything. You see there's not even an option because we don't have any eligible factors for that. And for save, we're going to leave that as is. And then under options, I do want to display the means for time, uh, compare the main effects, and we're going to use a Bonferroni correction here. Uh, now we're going to use descriptive statistics, and I also want to see estimates of effect size. So this is the proper configuration for options, and I'll click OK, and then run this analysis. 
So looking at the results of the analysis, you can see we have within subjects factors, we have three. We have the pretest, the post-test, and then the post-test administered three months after the study. And as we move down to descriptive statistics, we can see that the pretest, uh, the mean was 53.63 on this depression inventory, and it dropped quite a bit uh, in the post-test, but then just dropped a little more for the post-test three months later. Now, our, of course, our goal with any treatment is that uh, after treatment's over, the symptoms continue to improve, uh, the clients continue to feel better, but in some instances, uh, certain treatments don't have a lot of durability, meaning uh, when somebody's being treated, their scores will go down, but once treatment stops, these scores will start to go up again, uh, so that the treatment's not very durable over time. So this finding that there's still a small decrease three months later isn't necessarily bad. Uh, it's just not ideal. Ideally, the score would continue to uh, decrease. So this is not a surprising finding when examining data like these. So then moving down to the multivariate tests, we have statistical significance uh, at Wilkes Lambda, and that's the uh, metric we're going to look at. So we have a statistically significant result there. And then we have Mockley's test of sphericity. And this test, what you'd like to see in order not to violate the assumption, would be a significance value of greater than 0 0.05. And as you can see, we have violated the assumption of sphericity in this case with the 0 0.000 value. So what this means is when we look at the test of within subjects effects, we cannot use the sphericity assumed significance level. Instead we'll use the greenhouse uh, geyser uh, metric and you can see that is statistically significant. So either way, actually all these are the same, so either way uh, we're in good shape. We do have statistical significance so we, we do have a very low probability that the differences we observed were through random error alone. And then looking at the test within subjects contrast, again, looking at linear, we have statistical significance. And now I'm going to move down to the estimated marginal means. So we've seen uh, the means before but I want to draw your attention here to the pairwise comparisons. So the one, the two, and the three here represent the three dependent variables. The one's the pretest, the two is the post-test, and the three is the post-test uh, administered three months after the experiment. So what's noteworthy here is there is a statistically significant difference between the scores on the pretest and the post-test, and the pretest and the post-test three months, but not a statistically significant difference between the post-test and the post-test taken three months later, 0 0.991. That's not statistically significant. And again, these findings aren't surprising uh, given the, the means that we can see up here. You know, the the post-test and post-test three months scores relatively close together, and the pretest score is a bit higher. And then moving down to the uh, plot that I set up in the Repeated Measures Nova dialog, you can see that for the pretest, the score is fairly high. It drops quite a bit uh, for the post test, but only drops a little bit more for the post test done three months after the experiment, which is what we already knew, but it's nice to see it visually. It makes it a little easier to have another way to analyze the findings. I hope you found this video on one way repeated measures ANOVA to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.